So let us prepare for worship through our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trust in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, we are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, we are shown God's mercy. We are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. good and evil rages within and around us, and all the forces that defy you tempt us with empty promises. Keep us steadfast in your word. Help us trust in the armor you give us to defend against evil. And when we fall, raise us again and restore us to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. For our service of blessing of the uh, school supplies and uh, those who are, those persons who are engaging in the school enterprise for a, a coming year, uh, I just wanted to give a few words of, of blessing and, uh, and it's a prayer and uh, it, it, it involves your response, which is when to the words, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pretty familiar. Let us pray. God is the source of all wisdom and knowledge. Let us ask him to bless those who seek to learn and their teachers. For students, as they begin this new school year, that the Spirit of God may grant them the gifts of wisdom, understanding, and delight in their learning. Lord, in your mercy. For teachers, as they share their knowledge, with gentleness, patience, and concern for their students. Give them support and affirmation in their vital role as teachers. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. 
For parents, the first teachers of their children, their role is vital too. We pray that their faith and love may be a source of encouragement to their children and a support to the teachers who have charge of them. Lord, in your mercy. We ask your blessing on the supplies that have been gathered for this school year and upon those who gave them. May our schools receive what they need to successfully accomplish the goals of their learning. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, our God, in your wisdom and love, you surround us with the mysteries of the universe. In times long past, you send us your prophets to teach your ways and to bear witness to your undying love. You send us your Son to teach us by word and example that true wisdom comes from you alone. Send your Spirit upon these students and teachers and parents and fill them with your wisdom and blessing. Grant that during this academic year, they may devote themselves to their studies and share what they have learned from others. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. How many teachers do we have? How many former teachers do we have? <laughs> Well, let's give them a round of applause. Right, what about the students? Is there anyone going to back to school? <laughs> Ever? 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 What, what grade? Eighth. Eighth grade. Yeah. All right. Well, God bless you, too. Let's give him a round of applause. All right. The first lesson is a reading from Joshua. The 24th chapter. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way that we went, and among all the peoples who, through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. In our house, uh, hanging on uh, one of the walls, by the, right by the front door is a, a tapestry that was created by a member of a parish I served many, many years ago. And it has a house on it, and it says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Please read responsibly with me from Psalm 34. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from them all. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. And then there's a reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. 
Put on the whole armor of God so that you'll be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day. And having done everything to stand firm, stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness and his shoes for your feet. Put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in the supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak a message, may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, children, pay attention. <laughs> what are these? Arrows. Arrows. Yeah, did, did we read about arrows in our lesson today? Uh, something about arrows? Who, who, who did the arrows come from? This is the devil, the evil one, Satan, right? Yeah. There are things like um, temptation. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Guilt. <laughs> you have sinned. Ooh, yes. <laughs> Lies. You know, the devil started out lying to Eve and to Adam. You know, he said, he said God said, you will not die. You will not die. If you eat the apple, if you eat the fruit, you won't die. <laughs> they did. Physically and spiritually in terms of their connection with God. Yeah. What, what, can, we, what can we do about these arrows. I mean, how, how could he avoid getting hit? How fast can you run? Not very fast. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you find it. It's good. You, you can't run. You know? But what God has done is provided a suit of armor. For example, still get down there, okay. Um, the belt, a belt, huh? but it's not the belt of lies, it's the belt of truth, it says in our gospel, or our lesson, doesn't it? Righteousness, huh? You know? Let's see what else we got for that. 
Oh, here. By the way, the the breast, the righteousness is is not ours. It's God's righteousness. It's the righteousness that Jesus won on the cross. Now Jesus obeyed God perfectly. And in, in Acts, three times at least in Acts, he's called the righteous one. So it's his breastplate that he gives to us. Shield. Shield of faith. Yes. And again, you know, our faith is is undergirded and supported and founded upon the faith of Jesus. You know, it says in the Bible, we are saved by faith. You know, and, it's, and we think it's ours, you know, we're saved because we believe. But, but it, it, the way it's written, it can also be translated, we are saved by the faith of Jesus. And that's a kind of a faith, though, isn't it? It would be a faith in Jesus' faith, who trusted God completely. Now, that's the shield. And that, that helps. Right. What else we got in here? See, I got the belt and the breastplate and the shield. How about, how about the helmet? The helmet of salvation. Huh? You know, Jesus wore a helmet, too. As a matter of fact, uh, the, the breastplate and the uh, helmet, uh, th those are things that God not only provides for us, but they are also things that the Bible says God wore. He wears himself. You know, the, the prophet Isaiah is talking about a time when Israel, uh, well, there wasn't any justice in the land. There wasn't any righteousness in the land. And God says, well, who's going to intervene? And then, and then God says, well, I will find victory with my own arm. I will put on a breastplate of righteousness and the helmet of salvation. <coughs> so th these are really connected with God and God's power and God's strength. Hmm? That's, pretty, that's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Where was this when I needed it? <laughs> Hold on to that thought. Shoes. Not for running away. But these are shoes to run to tell others the good news of peace. The good news of peace. Peace between us and God. You don't have to put those on. And then I think I've got one more thing. The sword of the spirit. <laughs> which is the Word of God. Yeah. Are you ready? I'm ready. You ready? You're ready for anything, aren't you? I'm ready. Okay. Just don't make me run. No, I won't. No. You don't have to. You're protected. You're you know, one of the things to notice is that um, these are weapons that are spiritual weapons. You know, Paul writes that our warfare is, is not against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces, the powers, the authorities, the, the powers in the heavens. And uh, so, and, and so it's the war is fought differently. It's, it, it's, as a matter of fact, it's, it's a war against aggression. It's a war that defends against attacks. The, the devil is the one who attacks with all those little arrows that I was talking about before. And, and we don't uh, uh, fight those attacks like lies with bigger lies, you know, oh, just tell a bigger and better lie, you know. No, it's the truth. 
We don't fight war and kill war by having more war. That just adds to the war. We, we fight it with peace. Sometimes I think we need a suit like that. But you know, it works too. It works because, as I say, for one thing, these are things that God not only has given us, but has worn himself and, it, and has empowered himself. It's a part of our spiritual battle with not weapons and physical things, but with things like hate which is overcome by love. Anger, which is overcome by peace and, and compassion and service and generosity. You know, there was a, and I, I see Roger, uh, my historian is not here, so I might not be in too much trouble uh, with my history, but uh, um, I remember there was a conclusion of World War I, and at the conclusion of that war, Germany, who, who started the thing, you know, it, it, they, were, they were punished really brutally. I mean, it, in some people's estimation, it was excessively. And they were punished economically, militarily, uh, even in terms of their national identity and pride, so forth and so on. And not only in uh, Germany, but here in the United States, you know, the Germans that came over had uh, some difficult times as well, just because they were German. And, uh, and, and, then, and then 20 years later, after that war was over, we had another one, another world war. And again with Germany, started it up again. And uh, after that war, though, they had what is called the European uh, Recovery Program, more commonly known as the Marshall Plan. And it was to rebuild Europe. He provided resources to bring their economy, for instance, back online and, and, and boost them up. And the, the surprising part about this is that Germany was included in the deal in the recovery. Likewise, in Japan, when that war with that country was over, there was a recovery program, which uh, took several years and uh, involved the reshaping of their political system, and women were given greater status in Japan after that uh, war, and, and even it terminated in kind of an alliance between Japan and the allied countries that had once fought them. And let's see, it's been only seven decades since the end of that war, but I don't hear anything about Germany or Japan wanting to start another one. And I just wonder if we had done that the first time around, what might have been different? If it might have been a different world. But I don't say it's, I don't guarantee it. I don't guarantee it, except to say that uh, it's possible and it works. Stand firm, young man. Aye, aye. That's what the passage says to you. Know, stand, stand firm. You'll be able to withstand anything the devil can throw at you. Huh? You know, I think I need a suit like that. Amen.
in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, summoned under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our prayers of intercession, the congregation's response to the Lord in your mercy is again, hear our prayer. May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of courage, bless all leaders of your church. Make them ready to proclaim the gospel of peace and strengthen them to preach your loving word. Lord, in your mercy. God of creation, bless fields and orchards. Protect the land from drought and bring life-giving rain to support growth. Instruct your people in the wise treatment of the world you have provided for all your creatures. Lord, in your mercy. God of community, bless all who seek justice between nations and peoples. Give guidance to bridge builders, heal divisions, and inspire cooperation in times of crisis, disaster, and war. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, bless all who are in any need. Accompany all who are lonely and feeling abandoned and remind them of your abiding presence. Accompany all who are persecuted and exploited and open to us to their cries. Lord, in your mercy. God of change, bless our transitions. God, guide those who are embarking on new stages in life such as a new job, a new school, or a new community. Sustain enduring friendships and kindle new relationships and interests. Lord, in your mercy. God of comfort, bless all who mourn the deaths of their beloved ones. We pray for Pastor David Biles and his wife Donna upon the death of her mother, Joyce Maddox. We pray for your comfort upon the family and friends of Don Watkins, who died from COVID. We pray for the Penworthy family upon the death of Lee's stepfather, Wayne. Renew our confidence in your promise of resurrection and life in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, said for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. in Christ. Thanks be to God.